This tutorial is part of a series of several videos that dive into Oracle R12 and the features. Additional videos can be found on IT Convergence's website as well as on our YouTube channel. Hello, my name is Ann Risto. I'm a Managing Principal Instructor for IT Convergence. And today I want to talk about Subledger Accounting. I want to talk about what is it, why do you need it, and what are the components. In order to begin, I do need to take a step back and talk about Release 11. So in Release 11, Oracle used what they called a set of books. Now, a set of books in, in Oracle eBusiness Suite Release 11 and earlier was different than what you would have learned in an accounting class. In accounting, you would have learned that a separate set of books or a set of books was separate for every single legal entity. In Release 11 and earlier, Oracle's definition of a set of books was a technical definition. So they said as long as the currency, the chart of accounts, and the calendar were identical for each company, then each of those companies can be combined into a single set of books with a separate balancing segment. So in my example, I have US toys, Italy toys, and India toys, all using a single set of books with a separate balancing segment. Some issues that I personally had with a um, set of books from a functional standpoint is a lot of us would have to consolidate from our transactional set of books into a consolidated set of books for regulatory reporting purposes. So for example, in Italy, it is my understanding that you do not record inventory as an asset. When inventory came into the warehouse, you did want to record the count, but there was not an accounting transaction that would go along. If the accounting did not occur until the payable side of the house came around. So if I was using the delivered Oracle system, then I would have to consolidate from my Italy transactional set of books into what we would call the regulatory set of books that we, I would consolidate up there and then I would have to make adjusting entries. The problem with this is a timing. So if I consolidated on the third business day of each month and then I start doing some more adjust, adjustments or more entries in my transactional set of books, my consolidated set of books is already outdated from the transactional set of books. So, so that was an issue. I also had an issue with the inability to drill down from my consolidated set of books to my source transactional set of books and then back over to my say accounts payable system I was not able to do. And the reason I would consolidate is so I could create those adjusting entries in my consolidated set of books. Another issue as I just stated in Italy was Italy does accounting different than what we do in the United States. So in the United States, we use, we use US GAAP accounting, but the rest of the world does not use our accounting method. Okay. The other thing had to do with security. Albeit Oracle did a very good job with security, it turned out that we ended up using value set security. So it, it was a little cumbersome to maintain. From a technical standpoint, this is very selfish. But as the programmer, I had to learn where the accounting was stored for all of the different modules. It was not consistent. So accounts payable, accounts receivable, fixed assets, and so, so on, each had their own set of tables where accounting was stored, and it was not a consistent mechanism that they stored that data. Additionally, how the accounting was determined was different based off of whichever module you came, you were trying to research. So you might have been using auto accounting, account generator, workflow, setups. You might have created your own custom code. And my favorite issue from a technical standpoint is one that I love to hate. It was my, what I called the glitter report, the general ledger transaction inquiry report. And those of you that are accountants might be laughing now because many places that I went to as a consultant, I was asked to take a, to create a report for the accountants that they could run from the general ledger that would list the detail of all of the information that came into the general ledger. The catch, however, was 
they post it to the general ledger in summary. So in addition to posting in summary, they wanted this report to show all of the detail, but based off of the type of transaction, the description for the detail they wanted to be different. So if I was using an AP invoice, maybe the description needed to be the invoice number, the invoice date, and the supplier name. But if it was a check, they wanted to see the check date first and then the check number and the supplier name. So there was not a consistency. In release 12, Oracle is going to introduce ledgers. So the word set of books no longer exists in release 12. We're going to now use the word ledger. A ledger is still a technical definition somewhat, and it is going to be based off of the four C's, currency, chart of accounts, and calendar, and accounting method, the first C in accounting being capitalized. Every ledger is now going to introduce a legal entity. So each ledger will have to have at least one legal entity. And then from a legal entity, you have balancing segments. So in my example that I had before, I still have my same three companies, my three balancing segments, but now I am going to attach three separate legal entities. So the difference between a set of books and a ledger at an extreme high level is the three C's versus the four C's. There are different types of ledgers you should be aware of. Now, one of the things that I realized when I started doing my research on subledger accounting was the visuals were not three-dimensional. And it dawned on me what I needed. If you could think back to the early days of encyclopedias, you would have Joe's body. And Joe would be there with his structure, and you would pull over a transparency onto him, and it gave him some organs. And then you'd throw another transparency, and it would give you some ribs. And then a final transparency would show the skin. And that's what I realized I needed, and Oracle needed, in order to demonstrate how this whole accounting world is changing for us in release 12. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the functional structure of accounting and that is the ledger system. And I'm using blue to do that. So we're going to start with a primary ledger. If you'd like, just for a moment, you could think of a primary ledger as your old set of books. So when you upgrade, your set of books becomes a primary ledger. I want you to notice that I have transactional in double quotes because it is that transactional primary ledger that every one of your sub ledgers will attach to. In what I'm trying to say is when you first created your accounts payable system, that was the only module you had, you had to create a set of books. And when you created that set of books, you said, here was my currency, my chart of accounts, and my calendar. And then that told accounts payable that when it entered a transaction, it was to use the, that set of books calendar, its chart of accounts, and its currency. That's the same thing that I'm talking about here in release 12, only instead of set of books, I'm using the word ledger. So it's my transactional ledger. Optionally, and I'm not really good at PowerPoints, don't know how to build the little dashes here, but optionally, every primary ledger could have one or many secondary ledgers. Now this is, the secondary ledger does not exist in release 11 and earlier. The closest I could come to saying it would relate to anything would be a consolidated ledger for regulatory reporting, but that's a big stretch to use that as an example. So really secondary ledgers are brand new for release 12. Because I'm using the word ledger here, a ledger means the four C's could be completely different from both of these. So there's nothing that needs to be consistent between the two. Optionally, again, I don't have a dashed line here, sorry. Optionally, every ledger can have one or many currencies to it. So, so if I wanted to restate my US dollars ledger in British pounds, I could create a, a reporting currency for pounds. And at, at that point, I'd be able to translate it into at a balance level, a sub ledger, 
uh, level and so forth. Notice I have it at the secondary ledger. Now, when I used the word ledger, I said any of the four C's could be different. Any or all of those four C's could be different. However, when you're dealing with these currencies, the only thing that could be different is the currency itself. The calendar, the chart of accounts, and the accounting method all are identical to the source ledger. So this is the accounting structure. Okay, let's, let's get into subledger accounting specifically. So the goal of subledger accounting is to be able to separate the transaction from the accounting. Now I know a lot of accountants don't see that, but if, if I could relate to you men in the audience that like football, if I was able to give you four tickets for $100, four tickets, airfare, Super Bowl tickets, and hotel, to wherever the next Super Bowl is, and it would only cost you $100, would you take it? Well, most of you would. You'd be like, yep, i deal with it. Well, let me give you an example of separating the transaction from accounting. Your wife's sister is getting married on the same day as the Super Bowl. Where are you going, the Super Bowl or the wedding? That's separating the transaction, okay? So from an accounting standpoint, we all have Jim Bob out in the warehouse and he receives the goods, but we have forced Jim Bob to learn accounting in order to, to put the goods on the, the shelves. I don't wanna have to do that. I want Jim Bob just to be able to enter the accounting. I am forcing everybody to learn accounting in this entire e-business suite world. What I want to do is to have a central location for all of my accounting and let the accounting stay with the accountants. Okay, so that's the goal. So the goal would be I receive an invoice from my vendor. It's in accounts payable. Well, they don't put your chart of accounts on there. They just say you owe them $150. Okay, so it's that sort of situation. I want to record the transaction, but not necessarily the accounting on the screen when I'm entering the transaction. That's the goal. The, uh, another goal would be, I want to be able to create accounting for any condition given or any regulation, okay? So I'll give you an example. A lot of the countries are changing from US, well, in the United States, we're changing from US GAAP accounting to IFRS accounting. So that would be a new regulation. Or maybe I want to do a what if set of books. So, excuse me, ledger. Maybe I want to do a what if ledger. So it would be a different condition. Now there's a small gotcha in release 12 against these goals. And that is that Oracle did not rewrite the entire release 11 e-business suite. Rather, it incorporated this subledger accounting into the existing structure. So what that means to you now is that the current accounting that you would normally create in release 11, it's still going to occur in release 12. But now that is going to be the suggested accounting. And, and in a couple of slides, I think that that will start to make sense. So first of all, all financial facing modules will use subledger accounting. Now I heard that there's an exception with trade management, but let's go with all financial facing modules are using subledger accounting. A lot of you will say, no, I don't use subledger accounting. Yes, you do. You will use subledger accounting, but as you will see in my, my slides in a little bit later, you may not use like a secondary ledger, or you may not use a currency ledger, or you may not create your own custom rules. So we start with our basic foundation with our different ledgers, again, my secondary and reporting currency ledgers are strictly optional. Now red is going to be subledger accounting. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is I, in each of my subledgers is where the transactions will occur. And then through a process called create accounting, I will take that transactional data, run it through create accounting, and it will reside in each of the different ledgers. So the primary ledger would, ha would store the accounting for my transaction. Optionally, each 
secondary ledger could have a different representation for that same transaction. All of the accounting in release 12 will be stored in what we call the XLA table, so in a common set of tables. Now here's where the difference, the gotcha comes in. Your accounting still took place up here in some of your modules. For example, in accounts payable, you still type in the, co the code combination for your distribution. However, it is the suggested code combination. You will run it through create accounting, where create accounting is a set of rules, and potentially it could change what you typed in to report differently. So be very, very careful that you understand that what you see on the screen is suggested accounting. The real accounting does not occur until after you run the create accounting process and the data is stored in the XLA tables. Okay. Each ledger you have would have to run create accounting separately for each of your transactions. After create accounting is, is created, another interface will run, which is called transfer general to the general ledger. This is your GL import. You've always been doing this. But you can now do this in a single step process. And it's at that time the data will come off of your XLA tables and be posted into your general ledger, into your GLJE lines and your balances, where your old FSGs will still continue, continue to run. Now one new thing, because you did not have secondary ledgers, I want you to notice I bring the data into each ledger separately, but when I drill, I will now have the capability of being in a secondary ledger, drilling back to see what it, how the accounting was handled in my primary ledger, and then drill back to my source transaction. So that's a really nice link. From a developer standpoint, everything is in a single location. What is Create Accounting? This is directly out of the Oracle documentation. It is a process, it is a process ran in all financial facing subledgers, which calls the Accounting Methods Builder. Now, Create Accounting may take on similar names, but Create Accounting is somewhere in there. So, payables and receivables, I know, use Create Accounting. In Oracle Assets, you use Create Accounting dash Assets, and in Projects, you use PRC colon Create Accounting. What's the Accounting Method Builder? It is a rules based engine for creating accounting entries based off of subledger account, subledger transactions. It is going to be the single source of truth. Now, here's the gotcha. Right now, Oracle's only delivering standard accrual, standard cash, both U.S. GAAP, encumbrance accrual and cash, U.S. Federal Financials, and China accrual. Notice IFRS is not there. Now, I'm going to go back on my slides for just a moment. And talk about this secondary ledger. Why would you want a secondary ledger? Well, currently, if you're in the United States, you might have a transactional ledger. It's already in U.S. GAAP. But you want to begin using the IFRS. You can make your secondary ledger your IFRS ledger. Maybe what you want is a primary ledger. You, you want to leave everything alone. The accounting is fine for you. But you, you want to do some what-ifs in a secondary. Maybe your secondary ledgers uh, I'm going to use, use a ship, for example. Maybe what you want is to make a ledger for every different ship. ship. So, I, excuse me, Carnival, but your Carnival Cruise Lines, which I love to travel on, your Carnival Cruise Lines, and they have everything in one, one single ledger, but then they want to make another ledger that has, this is for the dream, and this is for the magic, and this is for the whatever other ships that they might have are so they could keep the data segregated. Okay, You may need to have your Italy ledger as a secondary ledger, so the data, nothing would have to change in your current um, setups. Everything would go into your US GAAP, and a secondary ledger could be an, an Italy reporting structure. So the beauty is, if I, if I needed to, these secondary ledgers can take on multiple roles. 
Now I'm going to do a stretch and I hope I don't offend you, but I think it's kind of a funny scenario. If I was Enron, I could have kept my Enron transactional ledger going on and then those accountants could have had their fraud set up, this fraud ledger down here. The beauty of that is when the SEC came in, then they would have had a, a totally auditable fraud set of ledgers because your fraud would have been here and it would have drilled back to the actual source that was in your transaction. I know that's a bad example, but I guarantee you will remain, you will remember it. So let me progress into my other back where I was. So what does this resolve? Well, using ledgers, the issue about consolidation for regulatory reporting. Now consolidation still will exist, but if you are consolidating for regulatory reporting, you may want to consider using a secondary ledger. The beauty of using that secondary ledger is that the data is current. So when you, you create the accounting for your, your transactional ledger, you could create your accounting for your, your secondary ledger. And so the data basically stays populated at the same time. You are able to drill down from the secondary to the pri primary to the source. And because it's sitting in there, no adjusting entries are going to be needed because you're going to create the accounting for that secondary ledger the way it needs to be entered. US GAAP is what's used in, in the accounting system. Now there's no longer any limitations. By using the accounting methods builder, it is 100% user defined. From a security, I haven't been able to show this, but from a security, it's you have value set security in release 11. Release 12 still has value set security, but you are going to be able to also use what's called a data access set. My most favorite resolution is the fact that the accounting data is stored in many tables throughout release 11. Now in release 12, that data is my suggested accounting, but the real accounting will always be stored in these XLA tables. The default accounting is going to be determined in many ways. That can still occur in release 11, or excuse me, in release 12. Remember, it is suggested accounting. Then when you run through the accounting methods builder, that is going to be the single source of truth. Now, delivered by Oracle, it's going to say, take my suggested accounting and make that my real accounting. But if I choose, I could go and customize my accounting method builder to have all of my accounting rules in a single location. That glitter report is no longer a headache to build or maintain. That glitter report can be now a data dump from my subledger accounting tables in those XLA tables because not only do I store the accounting, which is the chart of accounts and the dollar amount, but I'm also going to have the capability to store the description. So for invoices, I could make descriptions with an invoice number, a date, and supplier name. And for the checks, I could change it around to be check date, check number, and supplier name. So now all I have to do is a dump off of this table. So that's a a 500,000 foot view of subledger accounting. I thank you very much and I hope that this might have cleared up a little bit of confusion. On behalf of IT Convergence, I would like to thank you for your time and invite you to check out our many Oracle related workshops at www.itconvergence.com workshops.